So I've been wearing the Yeezy Foam Runner for over a week and a half now, straight, every single day. And I think it's fair to say that I've gotten a lot of comments, a lot of stares, a lot of um, sly pictures being taken on my feet. And uh, even with all that, I still love it. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler, and today I'm giving you my thoughts on the Yeezy Foam Runner after wearing it every single day for a week and a half. I mean, from just the bottom of the sneaker, it's obvious how much I actually ended up wearing this shoe. I literally wore this shoe every day whenever I went outside for a week and a half straight. And I wore it in some pretty weird situations that you wouldn't usually wear croc-like sneakers. For example, we were touring a wedding venue, um, and I wore it there and it definitely did not fit. Certain people weren't a huge fan of me wearing this in that building, so that was probably the one day I should have left this pair at home. But every other day, whether it was walking the dog, going to the store, running errands, going to band practice, filming videos, whatever it was, I wore this shoe. And uh, I love it. If you haven't seen my original review of the Adidas Easy Foam Runner, I've left a link at the top of the screen and also in the top of the description because you guys definitely want to check that out before you actually watch this video. And so you can see if my thoughts on this sneaker have changed over time. And while it's obvious that I still love the sneaker after wearing it, there are some things I said in the original review that I think I'm going to change a little bit in this new, I guess, after review. Maybe I should call it like a re-review, I guess. I don't, I don't know. So just to give you some background on the Adidas Yeezy Foam Runner, this shoe released a couple weeks ago on yeezysupply.com as a shock drop for a retail price of $75. And I was one of those insane people that decided to pay resale price for this shoe in the amount of $318. Was it worth that much? Probably not, but at the same time, I got a good video out of it and I got a very eye-catching sneaker. So I guess, you know, it depends on who you are and what you're looking for from your shoes. The Yeezy Foam Runner is made up of a mix of standard foam and also algae-based, I'm assuming, foam or some sort of algae-based material, all taken from Kanye West's Wyoming estate. And to be honest with you, that mix of materials actually makes this shoe incredibly soft and surprisingly durable. Not 100% sure if it's antimicrobial though, so I probably shouldn't be touching the bottom of this shoe based on how much I wore it, but uh... I don't know. <laughs> Even though this Yeezy Foam Runner's release was out of nowhere, no one saw it coming, and it was in extremely limited quantities, I would not be surprised if Adidas decides to re-release this shoe, the Ararat colorway, possibly on their website or in larger quantities. However, if they don't decide to re-release this colorway in particular, they've got more colorways in the pipeline that they've already sort of leaked. So if you're really interested in grabbing a pair of Yeezy Foam Runners, while it is tempting to maybe spend the resale if you're really into this shoe, I would probably wait it out because either this shoe will get restocked or you'll have a ton of different colorways to choose for retail. And even if those other colorways end up being very limited as well, I wouldn't be surprised if the fact that there's more colorways available just drops resale across the board. So unless you really have a special occasion that you want to wear this sneaker too, I would wait. I'm also not sure why I keep calling this a sneaker. I don't think it's a sneaker, but I also don't think it's a sandal. I think it's more of just a foam shoe. Speaking of that, why is this called the Foam Runner? I tried running in this and it was terrible. I definitely wouldn't recommend that to anyone. It was like running in a pair of Crocs. It was clunky, it was uncomfortable, and it didn't look good. Maybe they could have just called the shoe the Yeezy Foams, or maybe they were just basing the shape of the shoe off a pair of runners. I don't know, but I feel like the naming doesn't really fit the shoe. But with that being said, actually getting into the wearability of the Foam Runner, I've gotta say it's an incredibly comfortable sneaker if you're just wearing it for lifestyle wear. As I mentioned earlier, the foam used on this shoe is surprisingly comfortable and surprisingly durable at that. While a good comparison to how this shoe feels on foot might be wearing a pair of Crocs, I do have to say that the foam is much softer than a pair of Crocs, and because of that, it's a much more comfortable underfoot experience. I'm really not joking when I say this, but it genuinely feels as soft as Boost underfoot, and that's something that surprised me every time I put my foot into the shoe, even after a week and a half of extended wear, like wearing this for hours every single day, I still found it incredibly comfortable. The foam just gives underneath your foot, so it really feels like you're standing on some pillows, but it doesn't give too much to where you feel the ground underneath. It really feels like you're wearing a pair of shoes and not a pair of slippers. Also, unlike a pair of Crocs, the whole front half of the shoe is covered, which makes this more of a shoe than a sandal. And while I think overall that makes this better than a pair of sandals, there were a few times where my toe actually jammed into the foam in the front of the shoe when like I was kicking, I wasn't kicking anything, but like when I was swinging my foot forward a little quickly and that could be a little uncomfortable. However, like I said in the review, if you did actually end up kicking a wall or something, the foam really does deaden the blow so you don't ever really stub your toe. You just can sometimes feel a little bit cramped. Obviously because of the perforations and the holes in the upper of the shoe, overheating was never an issue. There was always ample airflow and it never felt like I was getting too hot in the shoe even with this 90 plus degree weather and in a foam that would feel hot if there wasn't these perforations. Speaking of the foam, as comfortable as this foam is in a pair of socks, it's very uncomfortable in bare feet. And that might not be for the reason that you may think. The reason that I didn't like wearing this shoe without any socks on 
is because it ended up chafing my ankle just a whole bunch. It was a really, really painful experience just in the ankle area of the shoe, but because the foam has a little bit of a sticky texture to it, it can catch your skin. And when your ankle is rubbing up against this heel portion a lot when you're walking or maybe wearing the shoe all day with no socks on, it can really rub your foot raw. And that's what happened to me one day when I decided not to wear socks, but I guarantee you I will never make that mistake again. Speaking of wearing socks with the Yeezy Foam Runners, I decided to go full X Games mode and rock the brand new Apothecary tie-dye socks that dropped this Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. There are two tie-dye Apothecary colorways dropping this Friday the 24th. We've got the Chroma colorway, which I have right here, and the Fog colorway, which is more of like a bluish purple crazy fog mix. I honestly don't know which colorway I like better, but I do have to say that the Chroma colorway definitely makes the Yeezy Foam Runners look even crazier than they already do. If you'd like to get possible early access to this week's Apothecary drop, I've left a link where you can sign up for notifications in the top of the description. Now to be fair, that could also be due to sizing, and unfortunately sizing on the Yeezy Foam Runner is a little bit tough because this shoe doesn't come in half sizes, it only comes in whole sizes. And while I am actually a size 9, I did find that over the week of wearing this shoe, there was actually some space around the heel, and I don't know if that's because it started to flex from wearing it or whatever the case was, but you know, it honestly, it felt like a little too big. And that's weird because that's not what I said in the review and I still go back and forth on it. Some days I'll feel like there's just not any room around the toe and other days I'll feel like there's just too much room around the ankle. And I go between thinking that the shoe is a little bit too big or a little bit too small. Because it's a foam runner and there are no laces on this shoe, you really can't change the fit. So unfortunately, you kind of have to go with whatever size the shoe is giving you that day. And I know that's really weird to say, maybe the foam expands or contracts depending on the temperature outside. Maybe it's all in my head, I have no idea, but for whatever reason, some days it fits great, other days it doesn't. One thing I actually really did like about the fit of this shoe is how large the ankle opening is. It's massive, it's insanely large, and because of that it makes it really easy to get your foot in and out of the shoe. But surprisingly, your foot never actually slides out of the sneaker, and I'm not sure if that's because of the way that the foam kind of hugs your sock or hugs your foot, or maybe it's because the ankle opening is kind of thin so your foot never really has a chance to slide out, but for whatever reason, when you want to put the shoe on or take it off, super easy. When you don't want the shoe to come off, also, not a problem. I said this in the initial review, but the CAD designer who modeled and surfaced this shoe deserves a raise because this shoe is so well designed when it comes to fit and stability and comfort. And the 3D modeling and surfacing on this shoe is so intricate, it just blows my mind. Like I used to model like handles for spatulas and some would get really kind of wavy and organic. And even then I just had so much trouble doing it, but I can't imagine modeling something like this. This would take days if not months, for me to model. And that's in SolidWorks, a program which doesn't really surface that easily. I have no idea how to use other programs like Alias and things that are really surfacing intense. So I've got so much respect for the CAD artist behind this because this is, this is next level. An odd detail on this shoe that I never expected to like or never even really thought about in that way was the fact that the heel of the sneaker is swept upwards. And I said in the review that that definitely makes this shoe easier to walk in. And that's still true, I still totally think that. But something that I didn't realize is that driving in this shoe is actually insanely easy because of this sweep up. I know this is like a small thing but it really was surprising to me. On most shoes you've got like a hard edge or a hard angle on the heel so when you're pressing on any kind of pedal your foot kind of falls into the pedal whereas with this you can slowly roll your foot into the pedal and you get much more smooth acceleration and braking. It was something that I really never expected to be such a treat but I love it. I really wish every shoe had this sweep up because it just makes driving so much easier. It's weird things like this that really make me love the Yeezy Foam Runner. It's just is such a well thought out shoe. But since we're talking about the bottom of the shoe, let's talk about the outsole and the durability of this sneaker as a whole. So as you can tell, I've been wearing this shoe a lot and because of that, the bottom of this shoe is insanely dirty. But not only that, there is actually a little bit of wear towards the forefoot of the shoe. The forefoot of the shoe definitely has some light wear to it, but it's much less than I would have expected after wearing a shoe for a week and a half and only really walking on concrete and pavement. Like the rest of the outsole is dirty, but it's barely worn down. It's incredible how well this foam is standing up to this wear. Something else that was kind of interesting to me is that if you look at all these little indents here, which all seem very, very deep, they're all really dirty, which means I'm guessing the foam actually goes all the way down and presses the ground when I'm walking, so it really shows how flexible this foam actually is. Obviously, because the foam is the same on the upper of the shoe as well, the upper is also very durable. I've scratched the toe of the sneaker against a ton of different things, I've scratched the heel a bunch, but there's really no major scratches or even signs of wear. Yes, it's a little bit dirty around where I kick things, but I'm sure I could use a little bit of rejuvenator and wipe that right off, and there wouldn't even be a sign that I kicked anything. It's really blowing my mind 
at how durable this shoe is, especially when it's a foam shoe. And foam is not naturally a durable material. I'm sure if I wore this shoe for like a year straight, it would definitely start to really wear down heavily. But for the amount that I've worn this shoe, the wear is surprisingly low. But I guess getting into the final aspect of the shoe and the one that is probably most important to most people, the aesthetics. This shoe is insane looking. Like, I'm not denying that at all. This shoe looks nuts. Like, it looks like it was grown, which I guess in a way it kind of was because it's algae but it doesn't look like anything else that anybody else is wearing. And for me, that's why I love the way this shoe looks so much because it's such an out there shoe. I can't think of the last time that I was walking down the street in any other shoe and people were like really staring at it. I mean, of course, if you're wearing like dope hype sneakers, hype beasts are gonna stop by and be like, oh, those are dope, but that's pretty much the extent of it. When you're wearing this, everybody looks. Now, I'm sure that's not appealing to everybody, but for me, you know, a shoe connoisseur who loves sneakers and loves wearing things that people stare at, this was really fun to wear. This shoe is an incredibly eye-catching sneaker, and that's why I liked it so much. Objectively, it's not a beautiful sneaker. Like, I don't think this is gonna win any design awards, at least not from, you know, a standard design award point of view. But from the point of view of a shoe that's different and futuristic and future-facing, I think this is a really cool sneaker and I love the way it looks because of that. If your main goal for a pair of shoes is to wear something that goes with anything, this is not the shoe. This is a statement piece. This is something that you wear so that people look at you. This is not something that you wear to blend in with your business outfit or whatever the case may be. In fact, you definitely couldn't wear this to work unless you work at a really progressive office. So no, this shoe is not for everybody. And I guarantee you, if you wear this shoe, people are going to call you a hype beast just because it has Kanye's name on it. But to be honest with you, it takes some guts to wear this sneaker. Like, you're gonna get a lot of comments and people are gonna hate on you for it. But for me, because of all the reasons that I mentioned in today's video, this shoe is really compelling and I love this sneaker because of those things. Will I wear this shoe to any more wedding venues? Absolutely not. Will I wear this shoe to my wedding? Definitely not because my fiance, she would probably kill me dead. I would be dead before I could even wear this even close to that venue again. But, um,. I'm definitely planning to wear this shoe pretty often. It might be like an every other day kind of sneaker for me. But at this point, I would love to know your thoughts on the Yeezy Foam Runner and whether it's a shoe that you would ever consider wearing or even buying. So let me know in the comment section down below. Once again, if you would like a chance at grabbing the Apothecary Tie-Dye Collection dropping this Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, make sure to sign up for notifications, which we've linked in the top of the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.